Let's see how it sounds with everything. Hey, I didn't know. I didn't know. The guys at Toontruck just told me that November is metal month. So let's celebrate it by mixing some metal drums. Here we go. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixpress TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugins, special discounts and offers, and of course links to all these special offers by Toontruck. And if you really want to learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mixpress TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses start to finish. Mastering courses on so many different genres and a lot more. And keep an eye out on the new very popular format, the live mixing classes, those are one-offs. And if the videos are helping you, please consider using the super thanks and support the channel. Let's mix some drums inside Superior Drummer 3. I got many requests for a video like this to mix drums inside Superior Drummer 3, which I thought was a good idea for two reasons. One, it doesn't matter what DAW you use, we're gonna mix this drum all inside Superior Drummer 3. And two, because this software really has everything that you can possibly need to mix professional drum without leaving the plugin itself. All right, for this one, I grabbed the MIDI drum file of one of my favorite songs, of course, metal. I loaded the default kit of one of the many libraries that I have, in this case, the closest to the genre and the original drum sound was metal. The kit loaded is default. I'm gonna play you the song, only the drums, otherwise YouTube gives us a strike. Let me know if you recognize it in the comments down below. You should have already recognized the song. Comment down below if you did. So this kit, like many of the kits in Superior Drummer 3, already sounds pretty amazing as is. But the point of the video is to showcase all the possibilities that you have mixing-wise inside Superior Drummer 3. So let's listen to the kit as is one more time and I'll tell you what I want to change. Okay, so the first thing that I hear is this tom sounds good, but for this particular song, I would want much, much drier and more punchy toms, okay? The kick, the kick is pretty cool. But that era in particular had a specific sound for the kick, which I nicknamed the tennis ball kick. It didn't have this type of click at the top. It was a little rounder and again, more tight. And the low one wasn't as big back then, especially on kick drum on those metal songs. It was very tight, very contained. So this is a good kick, but we can do a little better. And as you can see, I already selected two more kicks and we'll see how we're gonna use those. The snare. The snare is close to what kind of sound I would want for this. It has a little too much snares, it's a little too bright, or better, the snares drags a little too long. While what I would want for a song like this, and to be similar to the original, shorter snares, but more ring from the actual shell. So let's start with the kick. Like I said, to gain a little time, I've already selected two more kicks, and I'm gonna mute the original and show you what I got. The first one, I got this 20 by 24 DW Deep Blue Oyster, which is the closest that I could find that had that tennis ball kind of top end. Here's how it sounds by itself. The one thing that I need to do with this is to tame this ambient because I want a tighter kit. We go on the ambient channel. This is the offending one, all right? I'm not gonna annihilate that kick from this channel, I just want less of it. So we click, we go on the edit stack, and this 20 by 24 DW, I'm just gonna lower the level of it. Much better, now it's tighter. And then if you see here, I also selected another kick drum, which is the 16 by 24 Gretsch, and this one sounds like this. Okay, it has more top end. The reason is because I do like 
this one that I selected, but we are listening to drums in solo and I want to give you something that you can translate on your full song. So what I would want is to have the option of having a little more top end, a sample with a little more top end in case I want to push it a little more. And this one is again similar to that tennis ball sound that I want. It still has again too much uh, ambient, so we're gonna go back and remove that as well. Okay, so now let's listen to how they sound together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bust them all to one aux channel so we can process our different samples just like they were only one kick. We have one, two, three, and four, and we put them on the bus one, we call it kick out, and we can process it, all of them in one place. I'm gonna start with EQ. And you can see the kind of tennis ball top end that I was talking about is not as high as, as metal these days, which would be here. But it's more a knock right here, around 2K. I'm gonna tighten the low end here a little bit. Let's say around 40 Hertz. Like let's do an, uh, like an SSL style 18 dB per octave. And now I need a little bit of compression or maybe a little bit of tape saturation. I love it. I love it. I immediately like tape on drums is just what you want. Let's level match. I absolutely love it. Let's adjust the EQ going in a little bit. We have a little too much low end going in right now. I removed it a little bit here around 70 and now we need a little bit of compression. Let's go with the classic compressor and see what happens. We got some punch, let's uh, level match. I think we might back off a little bit this one now because we got a lot of punch there. Nice. Now this node here around 400. Now it's better, especially thinking how big the guitars and the bass, usually down-tuned in metal music, especially modern metal music, you wanna pay attention this area that goes between 130 and 200, where there's a lot of body in the kick drum, but that is also an area where guitars and bass have a lot of energy, and you hear if you remove a little bit in that, in this area, in this case we are 170, the low end becomes somewhat deeper. It feels deeper and more extended, like you have more 40 hertz, for example, but it's just a trick that your brain plays because we didn't add anything down there. It just feels that way. And it's a good idea like I did right now, so I'm doing it in real time. I didn't prepare this video to set your first EQ and then start with the color and the saturation and the compression and then re-EQ into the chain that you have created, because at that point everything is controlled, all right? So let's say we are good with this kick. Let's open everything and hear how it sounds. And just like I said at the beginning, if I feel like I really need a little more of that top end, I just pull the volume up of this third sample, which is there exactly for that reason. Let's go to the snare. 
like I said, I have, I like it, but again, I have a, a, a an aesthetic for these types of drums in my head because I've been listening for you know this type of music for so long, and I like that really dry, really punchy type of snare, uh, somewhat ringy, like for example, Deftones, uh, somewhat really, really dry, like System of a Down. And I feel like Mudvayne are kind of in between with this song with not too much snare sounds, like bottom mic on the snare and more like a ringing, very punchy sound. So for this one, I need like a piccolo. This might be a little too high pitch. This still has some snares. This is not tight enough. Too big. Okay, all right, now we need to mix it a little bit. Now, first thing, I think I want it tuned a little higher than what it is now. Let's give it one and let's mute our original. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's go to the mixer because this sounds good, but we can make it a little better. All right, we have one, two, and three channels. So we bust these to bus number two, we call it snare X, because we added this, and it's got a little bit of a cardboard sound. And we have a little bit of low end here, which we don't need. We can do, again, use the SSL type of filter in there. Okay, cool. We can use a little bit of top end. Nice. Let's go with a little bit of compression. In this case, our 1176 should do the trick. That's nice. Let's add our original sample. And we have a little bit of excess here too. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the envelope of this and try to shorten it a little bit. Now it sounds correct, now I like it. A little less tail, a little less length on the snares underneath the shell. Let me try some compression on the original snare. And you can see what I'm doing, I'm keeping the release slow, so the transient passes and those snares I'm not gonna cut them more than I did, but I wanna keep them down. But before doing anything else, I'm gonna create a, let's use bus 16, a drum out. So I can do processing on the entire drum. And one by one, I'm gonna send all the elements to this drum out. So if I wanna add tape, if I wanna add, uh, I don't know, an exciter or compression or EQ, I can do it on the entire drum. Let's go to the toms. And let's go to the mixer and see how much of those go into the ambient room. So the first thing we can reduce the level going into the ambient, like 10 dB. Again, I want really punchy and dry toms. They're still not there. I think we can try to find a better sample for this. I think it's gonna be one of these. And for this one, the other. See how they sound together. Let's shorten it a little bit. All right.
right, let's try the other one. Same thing, about 700. Nice. Now we have tight toms. Let's hear it in the part with all the rest of the drum. We can make them a little longer. They're a little, I made them a little too tight, so let's try 850. Nice, let's mix them a little bit. We are gonna send these to bus three. We're gonna call it Tom's. And we're gonna send this to the drum out as well. Let's start with EQ. I'm gonna just play everything to EQ these in context. Just removing that 300 and giving it a little more top end, maybe with a shell. You know what? I think I'm gonna send them to a parallel, bus 15 in this case, and I'm gonna call it drum crush. I'm gonna put this tape simulator here instead and just crush it. And then I can send things to it because I, I want these toms to sound fairly clean and punchy and clear, but I also want some aggression. Let's put the drive all the way up and compensate for the level. Yeah, that will work, but I want a gate before that because I really want only the transient of these toms to hit the tape. Let's see how it sounds. I think we have a lot of kick, so we pull it back like 1 dB and something and see. Things are pretty good, maybe a little less, 1.2. Let's try a little bit of that tape emulation that, that we have on the actual drum out. All the way down and I want a little bit of color on it. Sounds good, let's keep going. I wanna try to grab the ambient that we have and send it to bus 14 in this case. And we call it room crush and we send drum crush to drum out as well. And on this room crush, I'm just gonna try to crush it. Let's go 76, all bottom mode. And let's see how this sounds. I think we're not getting enough signal in to do what I want to do because I already am all the way to the input. So I'm just gonna try to distort it a little bit. I like this MD2. With the filter so the symbols don't get too uh, brush, but let's try with them without. See, it's great that you can do everything inside the plugin. Let me pull the fader down and just push it a little bit first without the filter. Actually, it doesn't bother me the top end, but what bothers me is this low mid thingy here, and I can't push the level as much as I want if I don't remove it. Nice, a little bit of dirt, but still we keep the tightness, okay? There's just more aggression in the cymbals and uh, it needed some heavy filtering, but we are not afraid. We do what we have to do to make it sound the way we want. I think we have other toms. We have these two toms. So we are gonna try to match a rock solid for this. I like this. So we got the titanium. I'm not sure about this one. It's either one of these two. Let's hear the feel. It's 
not bad. Let's hear with the other one. I think the other one is better. Let's do this. All right, this one level is too high in volume, so we drop it like 4 dB. Still high. And this is good. We need a little more. Now, I want from this one more attack. I'm just going to try instead to use a transient designer. There you go. And then we need EQ. And a little boom there. I still have something in the second tom that doesn't, it, I don't like. Now it's better. Now that I balanced the tone of them, I can actually use, I want to be precise here, so I'm just going to go with a compressor limiter, and I'm just going to try to contain a little bit the snap that I gave them. Too much. That's nice. And we have to back the volume down a little bit of this. Let's see how it sounds with everything. Nice. Now they're really, they fit into and I can even push them a little more. I'm actually gonna try to do it with an exciter, one of the exciters that I have. I'm almost tempted to have the snare even more dry than it is, but I won't do it. Cause I know, you know, in, a, in, in reality, when you mix with vocals and, and guitars and everything, it, it always, this is actually a, a very common uh, mistake that I notice in when you know people send me mixes to review that they concentrate so much on the snap of the snare especially in metal and they don't understand that without any ambient on it it doesn't matter even if you want a dry sound like this when everything is in the tail of a snare is always gonna be maxed by all the other instruments so you will notice that you will always end up having more tail and more sustain even on a dry snare than you would ever think when you listen to it in solo you probably won't like it because i want a dry snare but that doesn't matter how it sounds in solo it's always in the context and that's again one of the mistakes that i always notice they always end up with this sound that's the snare. There's no body, there's no length, there's no tone to it. It's like a little tiny transient that pops up for like five milliseconds and does this, and it's got no power behind it. But I'm digressing. I mean, this could be a good sound for me, but just to show you something else, we could send at this point this entire uh, drum bus, drum out, right? And add either an ambient, which is the complete opposite of what I've been trying to do this this entire time, but just to show you that you could do it. Let me try with a Hall reverb, for example. Let's go 100% wet and not two seconds. A little bit of pre-delay. Let's see how it sounds, not too big. You kind of cue it out just in case, but it's an interesting sound that you can insert it. Like, let's leave this particular song out of the equation. You can build a sand for a bigger ambience like that and then just push the fader up in certain spots.
it's not even bad. <laughs> anyway, I think this is it for this video. This was mixing metal drums in Superior Drummer 3. If you have any questions, leave in the comment down below. And there are other in-depth videos on how to use Superior Drummer 3 for the tracker, how to recover bad recorded drums and turn them into professional sounding drums, all things that you can do inside Superior Drummer 3. So search on the channel, there are several videos. I'll put in the info box all the links. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Super thanks if you want to support the channel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.